Welcome back to the 2022-23 final playtesting tournament extravaganza. It's Puddin' Head, and I'm here with Zot again. Hello, Zot. Hey, guys. And this is a game between Julie and Power of Mind. Julie is playing the Druid, using that, sporting that Joktari Druid uh, image there from Academy, but he does look pretty cool. And uh, Straywood Beastmaster coming from Power of Mind. There you, go. you know, the... Uh... I, it's been mentioned before, I'm sure, but the artist who did the mages has done all of the mages for Mage Wars. And that's why they have a similar look and feel so that there's nothing outlandish going on and they all can seem like they're from the same world. Yep. It's very, very kind of that person to do all the art and I wish I knew who it was, but I don't. All right, here we go. Fine okay. tree and a double move. He's getting aggressive fast. That tells me that he wants to cast something big like a bear. Something like that next round. It would be pretty funny if he decided to cast like Kralithor, assuming that there's going to be falcons to eat something. Oh, yeah, I would, I would pick Kralithor right now. And that layer. Yeah. You pick a bear instead? Uh, you mean as the uh, Beastmaster? Yeah. No, it's a druid. Oh, it's a druid? Uh, I'd probably go bear. You could because deploy. The layers could bring out bigger things, not necessarily falcons. I suppose with the straight wood, that makes sense. And bring out level two. Not level. How much mana does Julie have? 21? Yep. So, yes, he's going to deploy probably a mana lotus for one, a uh, bear for 17, leaving him three, which would probably be um, a, uh, I don't know, leather, probably not a leather, maybe a leather. Probably an enchantment. Or an enchantment. And then, uh, I don't know, guard or move forward? Or maybe he'll do yeah. something he, he's crazy. Not gonna move he's not going to move forward if he's casting a bear. Oh, yeah. He's not going to move forward. So if let's see. Over here bear. on this side, yeah. maybe a Tigu. Oh, a bat. Oh, yeah. All right. Trying for those rats? Yep. All right. Cool. You called the Lotus. And with... 20 mana left, that could be easily a bear and an enchantment or a leather. No, oh, what is this? Mage Bane. Or it's Rust. Mage Bane, he should do it now. Which mana has he got left? Moving forward and enchanting. No. Nope. Okay. Casting another bat. All right. Lots of bats. A crocodile. Oh, crocodile. There you go. Wow. An economy and a croc. Okay. All right. That's a lot of economy. Yep. Tough minus two is not going to make those bats happy. Yeah. Oh, so the strategy appears to be let's get out as many rocks as we can as quickly as we can. Yep. I mean... One Purify gets rid of that, though. Or a Wand of Healing can sort of keep up if you can get rid of the bats fast yeah. enough. I wonder if there's a Poison Blood on him, then. That's it. What? Julie has not added for health to the Druid. For Tree Bond. These bats are really fragile. Yep. But they fly. Yeah. They fly. But if you attack with guard, then 
and they die pretty well. Yep, all he has to do is guard. Oh, there's a Mage Bane. Okay. Power Mind at four mana. There's a Pillar of Righteous Flame. That is an early pillar. Huh. Ah, he's trying to grab the Beastmaster in the pillar. Nice. Right. Did not get the grab, but did get six damage off. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Beastmaster's like, I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> I want no part of that. Yep. <laughs> get me out of here. He's going to move and cast Leather and take a damage. Oh. And then he's going to remove that damage with Tree Bond. And get two damage back with Ghoul Rot. There you go. All right. Interesting. This is a cursed Beastmaster, huh? He's got a pet bat, too. This guy's going to last a little bit longer. Yep. That pillar is going to keep um, Julie from taking the rots, I think. You got two options when you face a druid. Kill the tree, then kill the druid, or try to out-damage the druid. And that is a real challenge. And one of the ways you can do it here is generation control where ghoul rots basically there's two damage around. That's yep. what would go onto the tree. So the mage main damage will slowly accumulate. Yep. I mean he's gonna take roughly four damage around and can only get rid of two of it, unless of course he puts a regen on. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm sensing a rouse coming here. More cursing. Yep. Man. Chant of Rage coming at the snake. <laughs> whoa. Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. Yeah, yeah. You got to slow down there. Things survived the pillar. Okay. And backtrack because that just uh, there you go. All right. All right. He did survive and he did attack. And did he get a rod onto the druid? Yep, he did get a rod onto the druid. All right. So now it's Mage Bane plus a rod. Windstorm. Oh nice. Oh wow. Unavoidable? No, oh, what did he hit? Did he hit the Beastmaster with it? Snake. Yeah. Okay. He hit the snake. Oh, he hit the snake. And he rolled no damage. Wow. Everything's going too fast here. Yeah, they didn't they didn't calculate the damage on the snake. Right. And it died. Yep. Snake dead. Chance of rage worthless. So oh. Julie got rid of several of the threats uh, for the rots right away. Yep. And there's still, he can have, I think he's killed three or four, so he's only got a couple left. And he's going to punch the druid for three damage. Well, given the thematics here, I would expect a Tigu or more of those. Um, there's bats. a grapple. Yeah, that's going to be some dice around with uh, the death roll. That's going to be a regrowth or a bark skin, probably. It'll be regrowth, not the bark skin. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I, I would guess regrowth. He's salty about Windstorm. Uh -huh. I can understand that. There go all your lovely bats. And you're yep. not even in upkeep yet. And this guy could burn to death. And there's the regrowth. He transfers some damage to the tree.
Power Mind at 13 damage. Julie at 7 damage. I I like the inclusion of Windstorm in the Druid because the Druid often has trouble with Flyers. Yep. And it was a perfect storm because he was able to do it against the edge of the arena as mm -hmm. opposed to one of the middle zones. Yep. That's a great way to do some pushing. Hey, the burn fell off. He might have another chance at a rot here. Uh, yeah, Thorn he Lancer's a, probably going to attack has first. Initiative, which is the Druid. Or no, no, purple is the uh, Beastmaster. So green, yeah, has gr initiative. green has initiative, yep. Yeah, so that, that uh, bat's probably dying. You need to get a big, bigger threat out there. I think these lashers are just too cheap for how much health they have. Yeah. Regenerate two and eleven health, so they basically have fifteen health if you're focusing well, them. Problem is, the vine tree is too cheap. It costs twelve mana and levels. I think Rooted was over discounted. An explanation of Grapple Rooted. going on here. For those of you who are not aware, Grapple is a condition that is applied by somebody with a Grapple attack. And if you are Grappled, you become the Prey. And a Prey is only able to attack, melee attack its um, Grappler. Uh, with any non-spell action. So, um, and both the Croc and the Beastmaster are now immovable because Grapple makes you immovable. And um, when you attack the thing that's got you grappled with your melee attack, you get minus two dice. Looks like you did show up on this game. I thought I had joined this one. All right, what's coming out? Another Mana Lotus. Wow. And a Swamp Serpent. All right. That and seems like it doesn't have enough health to survive. Um, and but. so Julie's preparing for yet another croc or a big bear or something. Julie's, yeah, he's got 11 mana right now. If he doesn't use much this turn and that Lotus, or in the next three turns, I guess, that Lotus goes off. That's probably a bear strength. All right, trying to get rid of the bat and succeeds. Yep. Seems like the right first move. If the Beastmaster can capitalize on things. Uh... The regrowth. Spelling the regrowth. Okay. Yep. That will help do some damage. It's true. But the druid can just I'm trying to on. get uh, damage over time onto a druid. Yeah, it seems like a losing proposition. Brace yourself, all right. Avoids the croc's attack entirely. That's nice. Healing tree. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I believe I recall Julie saying that this particular incarnation of this book is very well prepared for damage over time. Yeah, it is very well prepared. He can just stand there and transfer and heal four damage a turn at this point. So only the rot is going to stick. Right. And then he still might get another regrowth. Yep. And this is why you kill the tree.
Now there's a bleed down on Beastmaster because of the crack. Death roll. How much do you think an incantation that puts a rot on an object would cost? The removal cost is two. Um, but it doesn't fall off on its own. Right. So four to six, be my guess. Would that make a double rot twelve or fourteen? Uh, well, six would be to 12. I don't know if there's extra. It would probably be a little extra for me. So I'd have to think about it for the um, singular rot, what it would be. Um, ignite is two. Right. In a spell book point for a burn. So... Rot is a poison condition. Mm -hmm. So I would say four or five, one rot. And then maybe a double rot would be and 12. I don't know that people would. Oh, so, hmm. I mean, wouldn't I wouldn't just I would just have the singular rot spell by itself. And make it um four. What do you think? I don't know, I just thought I was curious. Because yep. there's frost trap, which puts two freeze conditions on. There's ignite, right? And there's yeah, six a few pieces of equipment trip. that you rot. Um, yeah. The eight plus rot on the um, death staff. Mm -hmm. An eight man weapon, only a partial chance. Uh, like eight or nine up. All right, more little snakes. Uh oh. That looks like a blood spine wall. I sense some letting go of the croc. Because the grappler can let go whenever they feel like it. So he could let go or death roll and then let go. And then he could push him through and then snatch him back. Have we ever seen one wind spell? Yep, wind spells would work too. Or just trying to keep the rots away from his mage. He's going to come through. This is a really good creature for, for some rots out, too. Yeah. Oh, almost. Almost gets the rot. No damage and no rot. And took three damage in itself. Figured he was going to get snatched through anyway. Is that another brace? Yep. Yeah. Saves two damage. All right. Gets another bleed, though. Man, that four-up bleed is nasty. Here's the remove curse. Yep. This this is disgusting. Um, I'm not I'm catching not a, you very well here, man. Yeah, I'm not a very big fan of the druid. Um, I, I don't think it's all that great a mage, but it if you're not prepared to deal with it, it's in my opinion more negative player experience from the other side. Because of his shenanigans. So, I don't know. Yeah, Druid has a lot of tricks. And if you don't stay ahead of the Druid, you can fall behind really easily. Yep. And, um, and of course, in the hands of an experienced master such as Dooley, uh, it's a clinic on... And uh, and to be fair, Power had an interesting, not necessarily that he knew he'd face a druid. However, um, 
is focusing on rots. If um, seemed like a pretty interesting take on it, and unfortunately, Julie uh, just as a strong book building and handled it uh, with uh, skill. And uh, the Beastmaster is now 21 out of 36, and Julie's down to four. Yep. And yep. bleeding. Yeah. So. Yeah, it looks like next turn, Julie's going to get a spike of 16 mana. Yep. So be enough Which for a creep. crocodile. Yeah. Um, talking about Tegus as rot vectors. Um, mm -hmm. I know that uh, one trick I've seen a couple of times is a Tegu with um, Badger Frenzy on it to get a double rot chance. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so Tegus and Swamp Serpents and Bats, it's kind of interesting. Um, and against some books, uh, might have uh, fared pretty well. Yeah, you know, Tego has what, eight health? Yes. Eight health and three armor? Uh, yeah, that sounds right. And I think it's an eight up rot. Mm -hmm. It's a very survivable creature. Yep. Um, he, he'd have been good to get at least one of those out because it might have lingered around and tried to get some extra work. But after the remove curse, uh, he's now behind me. Having to, the proc is just working. Don't see a whole lot of vine action this time around. Used one to get the thorn lasher out. Used one to get the blood spine wall out. I think they're discussing uh, paths. Your mic is cutting out on me. So I'm not hearing everything. I'm you're sorry. Saying. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. How am I doing now? I mean, I hear the beginning of what you're saying, but then I don't hear the end. That's weird. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's weird because I'm not doing anything different than I normally do. So, all right. Hey, teleport. Get away from that grapple. Makes sense. Even the pet hound in there to die. Horrible death. Parting gift. <laughs> He's like, all right, I'll eat that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got all day. Hound has to attack the crocodile. No damage. Gets a nine up escape roll though. And makes it there out. There you go. Nice. Healing wand, and there goes the rot. Wow. Trying to grab the bat. Does grab the bat and gets the snatch. Of course, it is flying, so it doesn't go through the wall. And two mana to remove the rot. And we are going to have a fully healthy druid after the end of this. Yeah, that's disheartening. It is. Oh, it feels so bad. <laughs> If we're going to see a regen here. Yep, 
regrowth to get rid of the two bleeds. Yep. All right, 19 yep. mana on the druid. Yep. What's it going to be? Probably a, uh, another croc. Croc is 15. That leaves two, four, two, two, two mana spells. One, well, actually, the tree could cast a four mana spell. I think by moving two, Julie has successfully kept the fight away from his tree. But most of the time, people don't want to lose the action, and they'll do something else and only move one zone. And But he's got his tuned to do what he needs, and that's why the double move in his, this group. Yep. don't see a real easy stabilization path for the Beastmaster here because um, he's got seven mana. Mm -hmm. After revealing that regrowth, yep. cost him a bit. You get another bat out, I guess, or another yep. Dark Finasp. Well, I imagine we'll see another Thorn Lasher. Or another wall, one of the two. Or both. Maybe. Both and arouse. It'll be great. Bind goes there, okay. No deploy, no rot. Okay. Gets rid of the wand, okay. Crocodile moves in and guards. Two damage on the blood spine wall. Unfortunately, it will regenerate. And there's the bear. Yep. The defense, no snatch, but one damage on the bat. And that's not quite enough. Nope. For the wall. And he probably got a rust on him now. Poison blood. Oh, poison blood. Uh, it's even better. Yep. All that work you did to try and get those bleeds off. Now yep. it's done. Yep. Man, oh man. I did believe this was a best two of three as well. So then they did play three games. Oh, wow. Uh, Oh, that's cool. So they they were one and one then. Yeah, I I think this this might have been game two. I don't okay. remember. Or no, wait, I don't remember. Those of you who would like to uh, look back at the replays, Discord can figure out which game this is. Uh, let's see. Yep, second game. Best of three. 
that a croc? He got his own croc? Yeah. Oh, he's got his own croc, and then he gets pulled through the wall. Yep. And another bleed. Yep. And now he can't get rid of it. Well, yeah. Probably. It's, the croc fits in the damage over time theme, of course. Yep. And he's going to guard himself. Drew is like, I can take that hit. You might have been better to get out a bat or two early and then the croc and then more bats. <clears throat> Who's going to guard? Interesting. He's going to move himself through. Didn't want to get hit by the bear. Purify the poison blood. There you nice. go. That'll get rid of the bleed. Oh, and there's a lesser teleport that gets the bear in here for two damage. That was almost the game. Yeah. Gets two damage in a week on the croc. Nice. Good snake. That's the best do. you could do. The croc is uh, tough minus two or three. Yep, tough minus two. That snake rolled maximum two crit and 12 on the die. <laughs> that is a lot of nasty to deal with. Yep. And you got four health left. But it is his initiative. So maybe he can get a heal off. But he's only got 11 mana. Right. Get points left. What's that? He has four hit points left. <laughs> yep, that's it. Just four. And he's staring down a bear, two lashers, and a crocodile, and a vine tree that's going to deploy a blood spine wall. <laughs> yep, there we go. Yep. And he's like, okay, I got six mana left. Should I even quick cast? Nope. Yep. All right, he's got a ritual of Kellek and then move through the wall. He's going to die in his own terms. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, ow. That reminds me of somebody who sacrificed themselves to a uh, sacrificial altar. Yeah, they sacrifice right. their mage to their own uh, altar rather than let the opponent kill them. <laughs> like to to give Sardonyx plus six. Plus no, six. it was intangible when I was playing him one year at Gen Con, and uh, he stole my um, hydras and stuff. And he had a sacrificial altar, and I was about to kill him, and he sacrificed himself to his uh, own altar to give his hydra, my old hydra, big bonuses, and then died. <laughs> very silly very silly yes indeed very silly all right well uh obviously julie masterfully dealt with dot um yep. and wow look at all those look at all those spells that he was planning to do damage with so an interesting take on a Beastmaster. I think you might have done some serious damage to somebody who wasn't ready for it. But a Druid, on top of it being somebody who's tuned to that Druid really well. And tuned it for DOT. Right. Oh. And against flying. 
<laughs> right. So, yeah. Yeah, there you go. That was a Brutal. beating your force against many brick walls. Mm-hmm. Well and that's what, the, that's what the druid is good at, being a brick wall. Yeah. Yep. Or a bark wall. And, or and uh, it, it was an interesting take from Power Side. It was kind of uh, unique. I like it. But uh, fortunately, he ran into um, a hard counter to his deck. Yep. All right. Well, there's a game. That was, again, Julie versus uh, Power of Mind, and that is Group A. So we are slowly making our way through all the group stage games, and we're hoping to have all of them out for you before the semis. All right. Take care, everybody.